Well, welcome to Concerts in Quarantine, Episode 5. So this time, uh, we don't have a special guest. Our special guest actually is going to be Kimberly Fraser. <laughs> so, because I live here. You live here. You're a special guest in your own house. <laughs> But uh, Kimberly has a very interesting uh, story throughout her years, and, and I just figured everybody should uh, maybe uh, uh, get a chance to really get to know the Kimberly Frazier, because uh, it's an interesting story. Is it? It is. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Kimberly doesn't, uh, she doesn't talk too much about, about what she's done through her life and, and uh, what she's going through now. and. And uh, I'm one of those people that are super, super proud of her. And I think the story needs to be told. So that's what I think. Okay. Is that okay? I guess that's my Oprah moment. I don't know. Sure. Is this, is this what this <laughs> is? Your five minutes of fame. <laughs> so we have a lot of, uh, I, I, I kind of went back and, and found a lot of old videos of you. And you, you don't know half of what I put in here. Um, <laughs> I have to say... Like super cute. This this first video is super cute. Um, I believe. Okay, so if I if I say to you, um, uh, step dancing, and you learning the step dance, who taught you to learn that step dance? My sister, actually. Yeah. And um, my sister, who am I looking at again? Over here. <laughs> um. Yeah, my sister was a step dancer. And uh, from a really young age, so I was about a toddler, I was trying to mimic her steps. So when I became old enough, um, she started teaching me. And then I went into step dancing lessons uh, with Jean McNeil from the Bear McNeils. Mm -hmm. When I was four, I believe, I started with her. And then I studied with various uh, folks at the Gale College and other some other workshops. Um, but uh, yeah, so I began uh, my journey in music through step dance. Step dance. Starting with step dance, yeah. Yeah, so you saw your sister do it at first. And... My sister is, and she still is a great step dancer. She doesn't dance that much right now, but uh, she was a great step dancer. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I just saw her do it and wanted to follow in her footsteps. Yeah. So the video I found was a video of, uh, I believe it was your first dance recital. Yeah. And the bears were playing. They were so great. <laughs> <laughs> the bear McNeils were playing for the step dance recitals. Yeah, Jean roped it and all the bears to play for her step dancing recitals back in the day. And the music, I love the videos because the music on it, them is so it's good. It's really good, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, right off the bat, you see this little wee Kimberly with little pigtails. <laughs> um, with, you had a tie on too. Tartan tie. You had a tartan tie. And, tartan tie. And, tartan. and uh, <laughs> she come she comes out and now Jean had it arranged that it was the smallest and then they would yeah, leave. She brought out the beginner classes first and then she had a group of boys that she brought out and then each level the kids get older. Um uh, so I was I went on with the first group. I actually wasn't even taking lessons at the time. I was only three. Right. So it was before I think that was her clue to start me. <laughs> um, but uh, it was my sister's step dancing recital. It wasn't mine. Right. And uh, the previous year, actually, I destroyed my sister's solo by running up on the stage and dancing all around her. There's a video of that floating around somewhere too. But. Um, anyway, the next year, I think Jean had invited me to come and dance with some of the smaller kids. So I joined them. Actually, I think I did a solo as well. Um, anyway, I was supposed to go on with the first group of kids and go off. But I had other ideas in mind. You did, yeah. <laughs> so you'll notice uh, a little Kimberly coming out in this video and staying out for the entire time, even for the grown-ups or the, 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 well, the, the, the biggest the, kids. The, 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 but the what kids. I noticed was, was at, when you first came out, you, you, you were doing your, your step that you probably learned. And then as each, um, uh, gener gen I guess each uh, group that came out would have different steps. You were watching them and trying to mimic yeah, what they were so doing. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoy this video because I, listen, I laughed. <laughs> And I laughed the whole time that I watched it. So here we go. Kimberly Frazier, her first 
Uh, I guess her first dance recital. Here we go.
So you were during that whole video. You were you were telling me who was in in <laughs> who a lot of the dancers were. A lot so. of the kids. Oh my gosh! I actually think one of the now Bear McNeil's boy McNeil. Um, I think he was in the blue vest uh, there. I believe that was him. Um, oh my gosh! There was Brian McDonald, um, this great step dancer. She was in the video. Um, I'm trying to think the crop of us that learned from Jean um, Jennifer Rowland was another I don't think she was in that particular video but she took lessons during that time as well um, I think some of the McDonald brothers are actually in that clip I can't be sure um, but if you know uh, Sean McDonald um, Marty McDonald I believe the now conductor who conducts various symphonies across the country I believe he's actually in or in the group of boys oh yeah and Danny McDonald as well, uh, who's in Toronto now, great Irish fiddler. Um, I believe that they're part of it. I can't be certain, but something tells me they might be part of it. Yeah, so. that's super cute. Yeah. So you just didn't want to leave the stage. You, that was your moment. I, well, I love the music. I just love the music so much. And um, I think, yeah, I, I loved being with the kids and, and dancing. I don't know if it registered there was a crowd. Yeah. Yeah. in front of me right but i just kicked <laughs> jean couldn't get me off the stage she was trying to get me off with every group and finally she gave up and just left me there <laughs> and we just always found it so funny you know from time to time uh we would view this as a family and uh we just always got a kick at her when she would try to grab my hand to get me off and i kept pulling it away <laughs> wasn't getting off. <laughs> and then we finally skipped off the stage it was really yeah so many years later, many years later, <laughs> well, not too many years later, but um, you uh, you went to the Acadia um, uh, to teach, what's, it, what's the name of that, that uh, the, school? Uh, it's the um, Acadia Trad School for the Arts, and I believe they're, I heard a really sad post, actually, that they have decided, well, they, of course, they're, this summer, um, they can't, Go ahead with their workshop but i believe it was going to be their final year anyway and um, but it was a um, a summer music week-long camp in bar harbor maine and mm -hmm. it had um taught a variety of different styles of music and cape breton fiddling was one of them um, but they also they incorporated um american old-time fiddling irish fiddling uh quebec choir uh, uh fiddling from pei um it was a wide a wide variety of styles and uh, it was a massive faculty it was a great camp yeah and you'd have people from all over all over yeah, all over yeah the states and canada and yeah. yeah so this is something you 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 do you've done a lot you you've you've taught at a lot of these camps over the years so yeah. where have you where have you taught um gosh um and a lot throughout the U.S., uh, New England, Boston, of course. Um, there's a camp in North Carolina that I would do every year called the Swan and Noah Gathering in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a great camp. Uh, I've taught at the American Festival of Fiddle Tunes in Washington State, uh, just outside of Port Townsend. Um, Alistair Fraser's uh, Valley of the Moon Scottish Fiddle Camp in California. Taught in Saskatchewan, a great camp there. Kenosee Lake. Um, uh, I've taught in Ontario at the Leahy Music Camp. Um, so some of these camps I would do every, every year. Some of them I would do um, perhaps only once or twice. But yeah, I've been doing it for quite a long time. Okay. So this video I found, um, staying on the step dance uh, side of things, was in Bar Harbor uh, at the camp that you taught there. Okay. And uh, it was <laughs> it was with, uh, is it Jenna Moynihan? Is that, did I say yeah, it right? Jenna um Jenna Moynihan, yeah, she's the girl I went to Berkeley with in Boston. She's a great fiddle player. So what is this that you're doing? Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> so this is you step dancing to her playing. Oh, okay. And then I believe you head over on the piano. Really? Her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I told you. There's there's stuff on here. She has no idea what I put up here, but uh, wow. it's, it's great. Enjoy.
Time since since you danced, yeah. we should talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. And why is that? Um, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so for the last couple of years, um, I've had an issue with arth arthritis. And although I'm feeling tons better, I'm so grateful. Um, so I've been on um, a drug for the past two months, I guess. And that is the only thing I'm doing. So I'm kind of getting back to my normal life and trying to feel myself flushing. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been getting back to my normal life and able to play again. But uh, anyway, like I, the past couple of years, joint by joint, joints just kept swelling up. And uh, first... I didn't quite know. Actually, it was at the Bar Harbor camp, not that year that I was with Jenna. I believe it might have been a, two years later. Um, I was noticing that my hips were feeling terrible and I was having trouble going up the stairs. And um, I kind of went through the summer like that. I thought there was just something wrong. I thought it was like a, like a, a, a muscular skeletal thing where I needed to go to physio. And uh, so I did go into physio for a while, and um, anyway, try not to make this too long of a story, but um, yeah, it just wasn't getting better, and joint by, I just noticed like every few months I'd have a new joint that was starting to swell up, and um, finally, um, through seeing a few doctors, I arrived at the rheumatologist's office, and uh, uh, so the diagnosis was psoriatic arthritis, which is kind of like rheumatoid arthritis, if I'm sure lots of folks have heard of that. Um, so it's kind of where your immune system is not, it's overactive, it's attacking things that it shouldn't be attacking. Um, and um, so at first it took a while to kind of um, believe the diagnosis. Um, and uh, anyway, over about a year and a half, to two, I kind of kept hanging on to what I could, and eventually, um, you know, my shoulder that I hold my violin on, just I couldn't move it, the elbow, I couldn't move it, and I started getting really scared when I started getting um, swelling in some of my joints and my fingers, um, so, uh, and there's one foot that it's still kind of affecting, not, it's a lot better than what it was, but, um, 
like I said, I, I just started another um, course of treatment that's been working amazingly. So I'm so, uh, so very grateful for that. Um, to be able to do stairs and be able to walk again and go to, to stores. Well, no, I can't go to the stores now except for the grocery store. But, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm getting back to normal life. There, But dancing is such a high intensity. You, know, you, you have to be on the balls of your feet all the time. And uh, my left foot isn't ready for that yet. So I'm still working at it. You're um, you know, things, there's still things that are a little stiff but they keep um, I, I keep trying to work at them and uh, eventually I'll get to be back to be a hundred percent um and again I'm feeling so much better I mean pretty much back to normal just um things that like that but um being on your feet to that much of a degree I, I'm not there yet um, but I, I'm looking forward to getting back to because dance like I said dancing was how I started in music sure. and um, I love exploring, I love um, learning from other dancers, I, I love learning new steps, I, I love um, incorporating it in my music, um, I love having it as a part of shows that I do, love collaborating with other step dancers and I miss it terribly so um, yeah I'm looking forward sure. to uh, getting back to it soon. <laughs> it's hard, hard to watch yourself dance right now. Yeah. 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 But I'll get there. It's inspiring too, so I'm not gonna say it's hard. It's inspiring. So That's I'm right. gonna get that. Uh, you something to work for. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to um, a little thing you did for WGBH. Is it? Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Yeah. So um, I believe WGBH, they're part of uh, the PBS it's network. It's PBS in the States, of course. And um, so I will, it's the Boston local affiliate for PBS. And just so happens that if you're on East Link, I believe, that is the um, PBS affiliate that we get here for East Link. Um, so I, of course, lived in Boston for a number of years. And uh, uh, Brian O'Donovan um, has a show. Um, on WGBH radio and he also um, for I think some of these shows were filmed um, for television as well um, it was called the guest street session so I think originally it was for radio and this one just happened to be filmed and they kind of used it for filler between shows um, on television and when I would come home to visit, everybody was telling me they saw me on television <laughs> because we get the Boston affiliate here, which yeah. is kind of cool. But anyway. All right. So we're going to uh, uh, play this video now. Kimberly, uh, WGBH. And you had a guy with you named Mark, Mark Simos. Simos. An incredible guitar player from yeah. originally from California, but he lives in Boston uh, or in the Boston area. And he um, is... A wonderful songwriter as well so he teaches songwriting at the Berkeley and he's an amazing Irish uh, backer on the guitar he's played for folks like actually he's on Eileen Ivers recording uh, if, you're, if you know her her playing and but he's also written songs uh, for Alison Krauss and uh, he's just an amazing musician so this was great to play with him but I remember being very nervous for this because it was <laughs> um, I mean I feel I can hear that in my playing so I, I wasn't thrilled that we're playing this video but anyway uh, too bad we're gonna play it anyways <laughs> here you go enjoy it uh, Kimberly and Mark Simos WGBH here we go
Uh, that's some great stuff there. Um, really good WGBH. <laughs> Love PBS stuff. Uh, so this this uh, particular portion of the show, um, I have to give a big thank you to our, our uh, sponsor for this week, uh, which is 902 Advertising Group. And we'd like to thank those guys for uh, uh, sponsoring us this week. And uh, so I get to say this once again. I love saying this. <laughs> we'll be back right after this commercial break. This commercial break. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Advertising group for sponsoring today. Um, Can I just, I want to say a shout out um, yep. to Lucy. Lucy McNeil, I know, um, I hope she's still watching, but um, uh, I know that she knows the clip of me dancing very well. I believe she was there, or she was, I think she was playing in, in the group of folks at, at the end. Um, but uh, her mother, Jean McNeil, of course, the mother of the Baron McNeils, um, was such a great step dance teacher. And uh, just such an amazing woman in the community here. And uh, she's um, put on so many fundraising events um, for organizations like the Safe Kids in Nepal. I remember those concerts very well as well um, growing up. And uh, she's such a, a great lady and she was a great teacher. And, um, and I hope that she's doing well uh, in these times as well. And um, anyway, I just want to say hi to Lucy. Yeah. And I've been enjoying her videos online as well. She's been posting so yeah her and her husband are Rob, yeah. Robert yeah, doing some great. great stuff yeah um so you, you were just saying when you were watching the WGBH video uh you're watching your foot banging on the floor <laughs> yeah. and uh you realize now that you were injuring it at the time <laughs> I remember then I was having a different problem with um, my foot, but I ended up de developing a stress fracture. And I remember at the time remembering to not, to try not to bang it in that shoe, but it's just impossible to not bang, but it was starting at that point. Yeah. So I remember that moment in time very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked, I picked that uh, video for a specific reason. Um, you were living in, in Boston at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were going to Berkeley School mm -hmm. of Music, getting your um, your degree in music performance, mm -hmm. and uh, those set of tunes, you were asked to um, rearrange them for the Berkeley World Strings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, there is a fantastic teacher at Berkeley. His name, well, they're all amazing um but he stands out for me um, for this particular reason that um, he asked me to write this arrangement eugene friesen is his name and he's an amazing cello player and uh he began this ensemble at the school my last semester there called the berkeley world strings and it was an ensemble that played um a lot of different styles of contemporary music uh, as well as some classical music uh, and jazz, um, but he wanted to incorporate Celtic music as well. And he was, he just happened to be on my jury um, the semester before, and he heard me play these tunes and um, asked me to be a part of the group and asked me to arrange those tunes for the group. And it was the first time really I'd ever done anything like that before. It was a project I wasn't quite sure how to tackle at, at first. Um, but because of him, I kind of found a, um, a whole um, new skill set, I guess, of um, doing uh, something, arranging in that way, which I don't know if I ever would have thought of doing had he not asked. And uh, kind of came in handy for that. I've done other string arrangements uh, since. And then actually last year was really cool. Um, the band Biolak asked me to do an orchestra arrangement for their Celtic Color show. Um, so that was really cool. So um, anyways, it's funny how sometimes one teacher 
stands out. They were all amazing and um, they all offered me and, and gave me so many wonderful tools. But uh, he really, uh, by kind of asking me to do that, um, and just to be asked to be in the group was quite an honor. It was kind of a prestigious group at the school and we got to tour the Kennedy Center. Uh, we did a show at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. We did a show at um, in New York City, actually, at uh, St. John, um, the, the Cathedral for St. John the Divine, I believe it's called. It was something, one of the biggest cathedrals, um, at least in the state. I don't know if it was in, in, in the country or not, but and it was a very big church. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, it was a really cool group to be a part of, and um, the, the string players in that group were phenomenal. So I was really honored to be a part of it, and not only that, but to be able to write the arrangement for the group and be featured as part of it as well. Right. So. Now, a few people have heard that arrangement and have purchased. Yeah, that was really cool. The arrangement from you. Crazy! I actually, like, sold the arrangement. <laughs> Published it and sold it. It's crazy. That's really great. Yeah. That's really... So, do you want to introduce this? Yeah. Um, so, the tunes are uh, two tunes that we were um, a Scott Skinner. I don't know if the East Nuka Fife might have been an, actually a traditional tune that he wrote variations for. Um, the Devil and the Dirk is the second tune. I think he can actually composed that tune. So, the East Nuka Fife has a number of variations to it. So, I didn't use them all in the arrangement. I picked some of them uh, to arrange and then we went into Devil and the Dirk. So I called it the James Scott Skinner Suite. <laughs> Here we go.
that's incredible. I I don't know, I don't know how you you can write all those parts. You'd say like that, that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I mean that's um, that's impressive. Well, you know, a lot of it came from playing the uh, the style of Cape Breton Cape Breton piano. Yeah. Um, accompaniment. So I stole a lot of bass lines and um, stole a lot of tried to reharmonize it a little bit. Um, uh, using you know some things that I learned was trying to put my money to use because <laughs> <laughs> it's not not cheap to go there um, for sure. but uh, yeah so a lot of the rhythmic ideas and a lot of the baseline ideas and things for harmony even a lot of the harmonic ideas would have come from some of the great some of the great piano players that we have here so mm -hmm. um, yeah so a lot of it was inspired from from that nice so you would obviously like to do that a lot more. Yeah, I've done it a bit. Um, I mean, not as much as I would like to. I mean, it's definitely a skill that I can that can use a lot of sharpening. <laughs> okay. um, but, uh, you know, we did do a string show for Celtic Colors a few years back. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote a little bit more for that. Um, and uh, it was cool to have the opportunity last year, Celtic Colors, to do the orchestra arrangement. So... Um, yeah, it'll definitely be something I, I want to do more of. I have I, all these ideas in my head that I want to do. It's just to yeah. get at them. So what a great time to get at them while we're all um, having to so let's, stay in our houses. Let's talk about the first Celtic Color show. Um, where what, I think it was called the String Crossings, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who did you have in that show? Who, who was in that show with you? Um, so that was a show... Uh, one of the, the really... Um, cool one of the reasons I wanted to go to Berkeley was because I started becoming fascinated with seeing all these amazing um, contemporary string um, string players that were using different techniques of playing so um, one would be what they call the chopping technique where they're playing literally the drums on the strings they're doing all these percussive techniques with the bow um, and I became uh, really fascinated with other styles of American music, um, like uh, old time and bluegrass. And that's why I wanted to go to the school. Um, and I was amazed at the level of string playing there, of course. And uh, I wanted, after I moved back home, um, I, I wanted to somehow do some kind of a show that illustrated what can be done on a string, on, a violin or a viola or a five string violin um, a cello and those are like the cello and the five string violin viola they're not instruments we hear a lot here in Cape Breton um string bass as well so um I wanted to do a show I had a dream of doing a show that was entirely of strings um to, sh to showcase what the um what their different capabilities were um so anyway, I approached Celtic Colors uh, to do this show. And um, the time Joella Folds was, I think she was still in the role of artistic director at that point. Um, anyway, she was so fantastic to take on the idea. And we had, um, uh, gosh, uh, we had Daryl Anger from the States, Natalie Haas and Brittany Haas, um, Kevin Henderson. Uh, actually, I think his participating in the show tonight um, via, uh, I think, Hanukkah Castle's page. So if you know of her playing, um, Kevin H Henderson is from Shetland. As he was in that show with his group, the Nordic Fiddlers Block. And uh, Jamie Gaddy, bass player, was part of that. Kyle McNeil from, of course, from the Baron McNeils was a part of it. Uh, Harold Hogard was kind of my counterpart artistic um, artist in residence and his cello player. Christine, um, she was part of the show as well. I'm trying to, did I forget anybody? Anyway, there was 12 of us. Brittany and Natalie. I honestly. mentioned Brittany and Natalie, yeah. Um, so the show kind of featured some different styles of music. Um, of course, and, Cape Breton music and Scandinavian music and yeah. jazz music. And, uh, yeah. and some of the top musicians in the world. Easily. Yeah, these guys are pretty much the top string players that you're going to get in their respective styles. Which brings me to the next video that I picked. Um, because uh, to me, this guy, is, growing up, 
I always thought this guy was the best fiddler in the world. Like I was oh, totally nice. blown away by this guy. Um, and it's it, Kimberly. One thing about Kimberly is she's very humble. She very rarely talks about her achievements in life. That's kind of why we're doing this show tonight because I believe that people need to hear how wonderful this person is. And um, when I uh, did some research, I came across this video of Kimberly Frazier playing with Mark O'Connor. And Mark O'Connor, to me, growing up in my house, uh, Mark O'Connor was, was just the guy. Um, he played on all the major records that I used to listen to and my dad used to listen to. So then when I saw Kimberly playing with Mark O'Connor, I was like, wow, like she never ever told me that. But there's one little oddity about this video and it's what's on your leg. Oh yeah. <laughs> I meant I had a stress fracture. Well, this is when I knew I had the stress fracture. I had to wear this boot. My last year at Berkeley, I had, I was just known for wearing this boot. It, the stress fracture eventually healed and had a number of issues with it, but um, I wore a walking cast pretty much my whole entire year, <laughs> all entire last year, hobbling around the school and walking around Boston in this walking cast and lots of stairs and of course everywhere in Boston there's stairs and everywhere where you go leading up to your apartment or wherever else. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I'm wearing the cast in this show. <laughs> so it's a pretty impressive uh, a, a bunch of musicians here as well. And uh, this is, has to be one of my favorite, one of my favorite videos that you've done. It was a and, bunch of uh, So uh, just an um, amazing playing in this particular uh, video and from everybody, but especially from you. Like, Well, I really actually, no, I actually remember, um, so as a rule, Cape Breton fiddling is a lively, well, it's always a lively style, but it's not played super fast compared to a lot of other styles. Um, a lot of other fiddle styles, I should say. So, and Mark O'Connor plays really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Matt, Matt Glazer, who is the, uh, he started the Roots Music Program there. He was also, I think at the time, the chair of the Stern Department. And um, he, he, I loved him because he was so fascinated with the Cape Breton fiddle style, with the, he would always call it the rhythmic intricacies of the bowing. And, um, I remember at the rehearsal, like all these guys, they're bluegrass, amazing, like musicians, jazz, like just uh, amazing, the best um, string players you can get in these styles. A lot of the kids that I was going to school with and they just played so incredibly well, but fast. So the whole, um, I, the, what am I trying to say here? The level or the, the tempo took off and I just wasn't going to be able to play what I was supposed to play at that speed. So I just forced everybody. You'll hear the dip in the tempo <laughs> when I start to play. But I remember at the rehearsal, Matt was saying, yelling at everybody, Stop! You have to slow it down so you can hear the rhythmic in intricacies of her bowing. <laughs> <laughs> so all that being said, enjoy. Didn't work. <laughs> no, enjoy uh, Kimberly Frazier with a cast on her right leg playing with Mark O'Connor, here we go.
Thought I'd throw that last one in there. Yeah, I don't remember who. I think it was Paul McDonald's idea to do that. Um, Brenda and Paul and I went uh, to teach at the um, American Festival of Fiddle Tunes in Port Wash or Port Towns in Washington State. Um, or just outside of there and um, I think he for some reason Brenda if you're watching you can correct me if I'm wrong I believe that's when this whole party trick started yeah. <laughs> he put us up to it somehow <laughs> that's so cool yeah but that way actually that particular um, clip was taken at the the Cape Cod Celtic Festival um, right. number gosh it's gone back a number of years yeah. But um, we got a lot of requests <laughs> since. <laughs> it's been a long time, but I think we could still do it if we wanted to. <laughs> so you came back home from Berkeley. Um, and uh, I remember getting a phone call from you saying, <laughs> I think I'm moving home. Um, and do you think you can get me some work? Famous last words. I said, sure, I can get you some work. And what happened? Yeah. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked you, got, you worked a lot. You got really busy. You, I brought you in on the uh, cruise ship shows mm -hmm. uh, for uh, um, the big fiddle the, where the cruise ships would come in. We would uh, do shows for the tourists. Mm -hmm. And then we did a, a show at Lewisburg Playhouse called Celtic Drive mm -hmm. with uh, Emily Dingwall and Lyndon McKenzie. Mm -hmm. And um, you got to show off a little bit in these shows. I did. You did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a whole side that I didn't see before. And, uh, what was that side? <laughs> well, we're getting there, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so I, I managed to find uh, some footage that no one has seen before. Actually, it still has a little counter on, on the center of the video. Oh, this is not, okay. Yeah, so this is um, this is a video of us doing a bit of a bluegrass number uh, at the Lewisburg Playhouse, and then you uh, you kick into the Orange Blossom special on the end of it. You cringe, but you know what? People love the Orange Blossom special, and I bet you as soon as people hear the Orange Blossom special, you're going to see this uh, these comments come up for sure. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, this was something that we did at the, the Playhouse, and we decided to do Unplugged. We just put a microphone in the middle of the stage, and did it as if... This was a song that we learned from Trio, was it not? Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, we were just watching Dolly Parton's biography uh, last night, but this is a song that we learned from... It's... Dolly Parton, Emilio Harris, and Linda Ronstadt. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah, so this was kind of like a bluegrassy tune from that album. Yeah, so we get to hear your harmony skills as well. And a lot of people don't realize that Kimberly Fraser, even though she she would disagree with me, is a very good harmony singer. And uh, she gets it. She gets it really well. And so anyways, you're going to hear it all here if I can find it. How much do I have to pay you, by the way, for the end of the show? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, um, if you, listen, if you want to, uh, um, uh, there's a tip option there on PayPal if you want to uh, uh, help support us that way or e-transfer, uh, you can. Um, we really appreciate it. Times are tough this time of year um, with, the, with all that's going on. Uh, so if you can, that's great. If you can't, that's fine too. We love doing this and uh, we're going to do it anyways. So anyways, here we go. Um, Kimberly Frazier uh, doing some bluegrass uh, vocals by Emily Dingwall. So here we go. Bluegrass for you, is that okay? <laughs>
So um, we were we were watching that with everybody else, and we're just like, kind of laughing at Lyndon. Lyndon again. Uh, you didn't expect it to go that fast, I don't think. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I took off. Ding, 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 I had some Marco Potter in me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, all good. He didn't like you. He, you got to do the halftime, right? I just kind of did an upstroke. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. And he just like... You worked oh, really man. hard. <laughs> <laughs> he, he earned every cent of his yeah. pay that night that so in that one song. <laughs> um, no, it was great. Uh... The next video I found was uh, you and I uh, doing uh, a fiddle guitar thing okay. that we had worked out for uh, a little trip we did over to Germany and Denmark. Right. Um, it was Harold's festival, Harold <clears throat> Holgard. Of, um, he's been over here a number of times for Celtic Colors, um, uh, amazing Danish, Danish fiddler and um, he runs a festival um, just on the border of Denmark and Germany, and uh, it's called the, um, the name is escaping me. What's it called? Oh, come on. Um, uh, Folk Baltica. That's it. Oh. Yes. Um, uh, the Folk Baltica Festival. Uh, so uh, we went over there to play. Probably yeah. a number of years ago now, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, and it was my first time over there. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't realize um, that people would know who you are over there. Um, it was bizarre. We were playing in, in Denmark uh, in this just little little club, I guess. And it's a cool little venue, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, this woman shows up with your CD for you to sign. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> this, is, this is really crazy. This is really weird. Um, and, uh, we met, um, well, you, you already knew them, but I, I got to meet, uh, Sigurd and, um, Dita. and Dita. Yeah. And, uh, we really hit, hit it off with those, those guys, amazing musicians. And I remember, um, the hotel wouldn't let us, uh, we wanted to jam a little bit and the hotel wouldn't let us do that. So uh, Sigurd said, well, I'm going to go down over to uh, the bar and see if they'll let us go there. So uh, we, we, <laughs> the jukebox we went down there, in. the jukebox <laughs> is cranked, and uh, the, the bar owner, uh, all she needed to know was that there was free entertainment coming in from the festival, <laughs> and she didn't even hit stop on the jukebox. She yeah. just pulled the plug out of the wall. <laughs> And uh, we played for about uh, three hours. Yeah, until about four in the morning or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was and fun. They just kept feeding you drinks. And... Yeah, people kept buying us drinks. Yeah, yeah, I remember that too. It was really, really bizarre for a person who doesn't drink. <laughs> but uh, this is something we worked on uh, for that trip. and uh, Also at the Lewisburg Playhouse. This is not from Denmark. This is not from Denmark. This is the yeah. Lewisburg Playhouse, but uh, here we go.
thank you to 902 Advertising for uh, sponsoring us, uh, the show today. Uh, we really appreciate that. So um, I, I had a lot of, uh, I, I put a post up this morning about uh, the fact that you were going to talk about your your illness that you're dealing with. And um, I, I had a lot of emails and messages about people asking um, what your treatment is and... Uh, what's working for you because they have the same thing and um, they're not doing as well as you are right now. So, um, yeah. Um, well, like initially I was, I was really afraid of taking any medication cause it is, it's quite strong. <laughs> um, so I think the drug, the drug that um, is usually prescribed first is something called methotrexate which treats a lot of different things. Um, it's a pretty powerful drug um, and it can come with some really unwanted side effects. I was pretty nervous to even start it, but I was getting to a point where I had to try something because I could not function. Like I had to move, um, I had to move my bedroom downstairs. <laughs> I had just moved into my house <laughs> and then I might've been in here for like 10 months. And this is when all it all started happening um just after i had moved in and my bedroom was upstairs i had to move it downstairs because i couldn't do stairs anymore i couldn't do any errands myself um i eventually like i couldn't play i could teach um but i was more or less coaching as i was teaching um i could barely play at all so i just couldn't book any gigs um i p could play piano so I was lucky, I kind of hung on to the cruise ship season um, for a couple of years, um, but I could play piano and I could do that. But it was, it was a struggle just to get there in the morning and sit there all day. I couldn't sit, that was the other thing. I could sit, but it was, um, my hips were so affected that if I would sit for any period of time, um, I just couldn't stand it. I'd have to get up and try and move. Um, so anyway, my mobility was just like, pretty much um, shot. Um, so it was getting to a point where I had to try some sort of conventional treatment. And I did start methotrexate. Um, I started with a mild, like a, or not a mild, but kind of like a middle of the road dose. I um, didn't notice a whole lot. I also, if people are wondering, I did try CBD oil. Um, that didn't do a whole lot for me either. I tried that for a good, gave it a good chance. Um, it was probably six months. I didn't really notice a lot of change from that either. Um, so I started methotrexate, middle dose, uh, like minimal effect. Um, and when I went back to the rheumatologist, he was like, wow, um, you're pretty bad. Your arthritis is really bad. <laughs> and um, so he um, suggested it kind of as things progressed there was a study that was going to be happening and he wanted to get me on a study which I was a little nervous of too um but uh it was a study that was uh, going to compare Humira which I'm sure you've heard of before it's on if you're watching CNN or those channels that's advertised every second commercial um Humira also treats oh someone's trying to call me Sister, sorry, I'll call you back. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a study that compares Humira with a I can't pronounce the name of the actual study drug. Um, so it's a B, really long name. It's, it's not, not on, on the market, market yet. Yeah. Um, so it's an injection that I receive every two weeks. Um, I started it in the middle of January, and I within the two weeks I was up in the top part of my house. Like it was night and day. Yeah. Um, so I don't actually know what I'm on. I know it's, um, it could, I mean, technically it could be a placebo. I don't think it's a placebo. Um, but um, it, uh, it is some sort of biologic in that class of drugs called biologics. And uh, it modifies your immune system from what I understand. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know it's been working really well and I can kind of get back to my life again um so i was really lucky to get on this study and it's apparently taking place worldwide with like ten thousand participants 
on it and I'll be on it for at least a year and then there's an extension study after that um, that takes place I think for three years so I will be on this as long as I can be um, but after that I mean it'll either hit the market or they'll transfer to something else or um, it'll be fine but um, so that's I don't actually know what I'm on it's either Humira or this other drug yeah so, so the, the arthritis you have is called psoriatic arthritis and um, a lot of people you tell them I have arthritis and uh, they immediately think yeah, everybody has a bit of arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, and I really never really understood how um, how bad of a disease it is until I've gone through it with you. Um, I was one of those people that thought, yeah, I think everybody close to the ocean has a little bit of arthritis, but there's different types, and the kind that you have is very debilitating. Uh, it can be. It can be. So there's varying degrees of yeah. this. Like it, you can have a varying degree of severity of it. I would say the same probably for rheumatoid mm -hmm. arth arthritis. So um, I think for everybody it's different. It affects different joints for people. Um, and uh, the one thing I would always hear people say is, oh, you're so young for that. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's not, a, it doesn't discriminate because of age. Yeah. Um, it can hit at any point. And um, yeah. Yeah. So if you if you're somebody or you know somebody that is struggling with something similar, um, you know the other thing, it, different drugs work differently for different people. I've heard of people that did wonderfully well on methotrexate, so yeah. that was my first hope. Everybody's um, different. Everybody is different with the drugs, and it happens in everybody's body differently. So so far. I've been doing a lot better um, on this particular injection that I received every two weeks. Yeah. So it's it's very, very difficult on you um, and other people that have had this disease, but it's also very difficult on their mates as well because they have to... Um, uh, they have to see you go through that, which is the oh, hard. I'm sorry, I missed that. It's very hard on their mates oh, or their, yeah, the people they're with. Um, they have to see you go through that. Um, they have to help you. Like there were times where, where um, you needed help getting dressed as well. And, Everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, my family was very, you know, they've been great, you know. But I mean, mom and dad had to go to the store for me an awful lot, um, yeah. and then eventually you went to the store for me, a lot, and um, or did my errands or did my laundry or um, was just so eventually you were there for everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. And literally, you were there for everything. Like, um, you, I'd be filling out the paper at the doctor's office. It was like a, um, uh, what do you call it? A, um, a like a follow up form. So every time you go to the doctor, you have to fill out how how are you doing now? <laughs> do you need help doing this? And I pretty much had to check every box. Like yeah. I couldn't do anything for myself. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm doing a bazillion times better, and I don't like if people saw me you know, walking through the store or whatever. Like, I don't think anybody would really know anything was wrong. Um, I'm kind of at that point. So there's just a few things I need to tweak um, mm -hmm. and work at and just get a little bit more flexibility back. But in terms of endurance and being able to play and um, being able to live and function and bake cinnamon rolls and cookies at Mary Janet McDonald and everything, it's been great. So... <laughs> We uh we did a lot of praying, didn't we? We did do a lot of praying. We did a lot of praying. Yeah. And uh but never ever lost hope. No, I knew somehow that I'd find the other end yeah. <laughs> of this. Um but it w you know, it, the thing that doesn't make you give up is the fact that you know that I w I just wanted to get back to playing yeah. again. Um I wanted to be there for my students and uh you know, I have a lot of a, a, a lot of students, and I was able to keep teaching through the period. But I, you know, you just can't uh, give it the energy that you want to. Yeah. So I wanted to be there for my students. I wanted to be able to play again, um, have the energy like just to write the string arrangements or have energy just to do any creative process. I was really looking forward to getting back, and that's what kind of kept me going through the whole thing, knowing at some point I was going to, I was going to figure out a way, and. Um, and I just, I was very lucky that this, uh, that the doctor got me on 
this particular study at this moment in time. And um, now you're doing great. doing great. Onwards and upwards. That's right. So um, moving on. Uh, um, so you have a, a you have a degree in um, uh, music performance mm -hmm. for, with Berkeley. You uh, graduated summa cum laude. And <laughs> summa cum laude. Ah, ah. Summa cum laude. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, all joking aside, that's pretty impressive. You, you hear people talk about that all the time. And, <laughs> And it's it's funny you you have your degree here and it's not even up on the wall it's it's uh, it's bizarre, uh, but you also paper. you people also don't know that you have a degree in um, jazz piano from Saint Evex as well, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. A long time ago. A long time ago. Um, so with when we uh, formed this group Celtic Drive. Um, I, th I believe we were, we were rehearsing and uh, you were kind of messing with some jazz chords over some, some <laughs> Celtic tunes on the piano uh, that became really kind of jazzy and funky. I just started and playing like, and you started going on the drums and we just came up with something. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> We built on that from that night. Yeah. yeah, we built on it from that night and we came up with this, uh, um, what, what, uh, What's the tune that we did too? It's a reel called the Tarbolton Lodge. Yeah. So we just, I just was playing around with the rhythm of it. I slowed it down a bit, um, and you started playing, and uh, we just we came up with an arrangement um, for like a jazz, rocky, funky, mm -hmm. yeah, type thing um, for a group Celtic Drive. It was so we had bass and drums yeah. and Emily and Dingwall guitar. and Lyndon, yeah. Yeah. And then Lyndon does a bunch of uh, guitar tunes on the end of this. Um, and like, you're an amazing arranger as well. Like you think, you think really outside the box all the time. Really? Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> it's really impressive. Um, so we're going to move right into this and this is a uh, Celtic drive and I don't even know what to call this. Uh, I don't know. What did we call it? We didn't call it anything yet. Well, we don't really have a name for it yet. Funky piano tunes. Funky piano tunes. Um, <laughs> and uh, again, this is something, this is the first time it's ever been been seen. Uh, I, I guess should I... mention the jig at the end is the tripper's jig uh, as well. So that was something that the Rankin family recorded okay. a long yeah. time ago yep. on a piano and fiddle. So. Here we go. A little bit of rock, and we'll see where we end up.
Linden. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Linden. Woo. Two minutes on the electric guitar. How cool was that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a great picker of tunes. Oh, man. And, um, yeah, he's the... Uh, for anybody who doesn't know Lyndon McKenzie, uh, he would be Carl McKenzie's son, the uh, the great fiddle player um, from Sydney Forks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were talking so much about the Bear McNeils and Jean... Gene McNeil, um, so Carl would be Gene's brother. And he just passed away recently, a um, couple of years now, I guess, is it a year yeah. and a half? Yeah. Um, so, but Lyndon's played with us for, played with you for a number of years. Yeah. And then uh, we did our Celtic Drive show for probably four years at the Lewisburg Playhouse. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And we'd edge, we'd edge on Lyndon every so often to play some tunes. He yeah. did a group of tunes, I think, in every show that we did. He did yeah. one on the acoustic guitar. That's right, yeah. Um, but this set, we really made him get hot and heavy into it. <laughs> With these two, yeah. we played um, Mum's Jig and um, by Jerry Holland and um, an Irish reel that he got from his cousins, the Bear of Nails, from one of their albums that he loved. And um, we had fun arranging that. Yeah. It was great to get him pushing out front. Uh, to and we took, uh, we took some of these tunes and we went into uh, Lake Wind and recorded them. Never released it. As a group. Uh, <laughs> we sent them to Nashville to be mixed. Mm -hmm. And we just have them. <laughs> we never we never really did anything with them yet. No, no one's heard them. Um, yeah. We've heard them. Uh, but we uh, haven't actually released them yet. Uh, we just um, all got really busy, I think. Um, Emily, of course, plays with uh, Matt Minglewood and um, Lyndon. Uh, <laughs> like... I keep Lyndon pretty busy with uh, shows at Member 2, and Stephen Muse keeps Lyndon pretty busy. Everybody keeps Lyndon pretty busy. And he has a day job. He, and he has a day <laughs> job to boot. Um, and then uh, we're, we've been pretty busy as well, so just it's hard. It's hard when you have so many irons in the fire. Yeah, you know? but it's a fun group to play with, and I hope that we can do... Um, Get, once everything kind of gets going again, I hope yeah. that we can do some more shows soon. Sure. So one particular show I remember, um, and you were the musical, uh, um, you were the musical director for this show. It's a show we did called The Fiddler's Past. Tribute to Fiddler's Tribute Past. Tribute to Fiddler's yeah. Past. And um, we had, uh, the first one was quite, quite the, uh, quite the lineup. Great bunch of people. Yeah. We had Brenda Stubber, we had Howie McDonald, Kyle McNeil, Dwayne Cote, um, there's one other person. There were six of us. I know I was playing too. Yeah. Who, who am I missing? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> who am I missing we before had, I embarrass okay, myself so we anymore? Had, we had Sean. Sean McDonald. Sean That's McDonald. We, we had, had yeah, so yes. yeah, so it was Sean, um, Sean Dwayne Cote, Howie, McDonald, Howie, Brenda Stubbridge. Who, Brenda uh, by Stubbridge. the way, Brenda, I know you asked her if I still have my bear from the twins. Um, I do somewhere. <laughs> anyway, that's an inside story from a poor town in Washington. So, uh, we had Lyndon on guitar. We had uh, I was playing drums. Emily on bass. You were kind of going back, bouncing back and forth, fiddle, piano, and uh, yelling at everybody. Yes. <laughs> And we had Wendy Bergfeld uh, uh, doing the uh, moderating right. for it. <laughs> and we paid tribute to, I believe it was... Um, Winston, Scotty, Fitzgerald, yeah. and Angus. No, we didn't do Angus Chisholm that year. Um, oh, gosh. Lee Cremo. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Holland. Uh, there's another... Dan R. McDonald. Dan R. McDonald. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, here's another video that uh, hasn't been out there yet. And I'm actually excited. I'm excited to uh, let everybody hear this because uh, it, was, it was so well done. It's the Winston Polkas, the classic Winston Polkas. Um, oh gosh, Southern Melodies, and I don't remember what they're all called. But as soon as, as, soon as you hear them, you know what they are. Uh, the classic Winston recording. And uh, we kind of stole the arrangement from the, or some of the, the arranger from the Cape Breton Symphony, the Bobby Brown chords. Yes. A lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, 
tribute uh, Fiddler's Past. It's the opening number, I believe. Right? I think so. Is this the track? I can't remember if I had them in the right order or not. I hope but it's the focus. If yeah. not, then it's something else. It's, yeah, it's something else. Here we go. <laughs> Big thank you to 902 Advertising Group for being the sponsor for this show. Um, really, really appreciate you guys coming on board. Um, and again, if you guys feel at all like you want to um, uh, send uh, a tip any in any form, we, we have a, um, 
a PayPal option there if you want to check that out. And if you uh, don't like doing PayPal and you want to do e-transfer, uh, you can send it to Aaron Lewis25 at me.com. Uh, again, if you if you can't, that's fine. This is a free show, and we love doing this anyway. So, uh, but for those who who do uh, help out, um, we'd like to thank you in advance. And for those who have helped out in the past shows, thank you so much. It really really helps out a lot in, in this crazy time that we're we're living in. But we're happy that everybody is able to watch. Right. Yeah, really for sure. Yeah. Thankful yeah. that everybody is really joining us for these shows. So. Yeah, so uh, we've pretty pretty much come close to the end here. Um, I really enjoy doing this. I, I think uh, people really need to hear the Kimberly Fraser story. Mm-hmm. And well, I feel like two people have thought I might have fallen off the face of the earth for a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean... It's pretty quiet for... A bit of time. But, yeah, um, and you can understand that. It's hard going through what you've gone through. You still have the, the uh, you know, the phone's still ringing from places, uh, you know, that want you to teach mm-hmm. different camps and stuff, and you have to tell them, no, I can't do it. And, and Not now, but, no, but at the time, at the time yeah, it's I hard to say no. Of, um, yeah, um, to the point where I just, I couldn't travel. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, if you haven't heard from me for a while, it's why. That's why. <laughs> but now I'll be, you've heard from me the past couple of, well, the past month anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, big thank you for everybody who's, who stuck out and, and watched this. Um, we will be back next Tuesday. Um, not sure if we'll have a guest or not. We're still working on that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't leave a plane yet, but we'll definitely have something entertaining for you. And uh, if you want to check out Sunday, every Sunday at 4 o'clock, I do my Simeon shows uh, from 4 to 5.30. Uh, Thursday nights, uh, uh, Jen, uh, Jennifer uh, Shepard, Jordan Crocker, and um, Stephen Muse do their garbage night on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. You want to check that out. So uh, we're going to finish off with a, a bunch of tunes from that Fiddler's Pass show again. Mm-hmm. What do we have? Another Winston set. Um, yeah. Classic Winston Fitzgerald medley, um, McNabb's Hornpipe, followed by The Farmer's Daughter. Yeah. So here we go. Thanks so much, folks. Thanks for coming out. They didn't come out. <laughs> oh, I say that every week, don't I? Thanks for staying in and watching us. We appreciate it. Don't go it. anywhere. <laughs> Here we go. See you guys. (laughs) Bye-bye.